and welcome to the MCA Services YouTube channel. In this presentation, we're going to be discussing temperature programmed analyses, specifically showing how we set the instrumentation up, its various components, and the various analytical options. In further, further presentations, we're going to go on to show you some more specific analyses of sample materials, and really importantly, how changing analytical conditions affects the results. So the bases of temperature programmed analyses involve flowing a gas mixture through a sample. With this flow rate kept constant, we then increase the temperature of the sample, and that's at a predetermined rate, a rate of our choosing. And whilst this is being undertaken, we then monitor the composition of the gas mixture using a detector. Depending on our sample material and the components of the gas mixture, we can perform different temperature programmed analyses. If our sample can be reduced and we have a reducing agent in our gas mixture, for example, hydrogen, we can undertake temperature program reduction. The opposite, we can oxidize a sample if we have oxygen in the uh, carrier gas. A slightly more complicated analysis is temperature program desorption. And for this, we pre-adsorb a species of our choosing onto a sample, and then we measure the rate at which it comes off of the sample, so desorbs from the sample as temperature is increased. And a final option is to use an inert carrier gas and monitor the decomposition of a sample with increase in temperature. And that's providing, of course, that gaseous species are emitted as, as the sample decomposes. With temperature programmed analyses, we're investigating the reactivity of a sample material. This might be with a view to oxidizing or reducing it, or removing a contaminating species from it. And historically, these analyses were developed and used in the field of catalysis, but their use in other applications is increasing. We might be interested in identifying the number of active sites and assessing their strength. And by this, we mean how strongly they form or bond with other materials. From this, we can identify ideal conditions, for example, for reduction, oxidation, desorption, or decomposition, such as the optimum temperature, the gas flow rate to use, and the time required for the process to be completed. We can also calculate the volume of gas that's required to, to complete the process, and this is called gas consumption. We can also go on to study supported materials, for example, metals or metal oxides finely dispersed on a, a bulk support material. Silica or alumina are quite often used for this in catalysis, and the interaction between an active species and the support can profoundly change its uh, behavior when we're trying to reduce it, regenerate it, oxidize it, and so on. The instrumentation for the various temperature program techniques are very, very similar. Here at MCA Services, we use a micromeritics autochem instrument, and that's shown here in this image. We're going to concentrate on the TPR technique, temperature program reduction, as we build up the various components that, that are in this system. But moving from temperature program reduction to oxidation involves using exactly the same equipment, but just changing the carrier gas input. So we're going to build up the various components of the instrument, and we start with the sample tube. This is a flow through tube, and the wider side of this on the left hand side will contain the sample. We put a small piece of quartz wool in the bottom of the wider section, and this is to stop our sample being pushed all the way through the tube as ga the gas mix just starts to flow. And on top of the wool, we put our sample, that's shown here in green. And if we want to calculate consumption per unit mass of sample, we need to use a pre-weighed sample. These techniques don't require much sample at all, and quite often we will be using around about 50 to 70 milligrams of sample in total. So to show you what, what we mean by this, we've got a picture here of the entire sample tube, and this contains a 60 milligram sample of cobalt oxide. We can see on the, the closer image here, the black cobalt oxide sitting on top of the quartz wool. So once we've got our quartz wool and the sample into the tube, 
we put the sample tube onto the instrument. And with the AutoChem, the port fittings are located just above a furnace, and that's shown here in red. The next component is a thermocouple. And we use the thermocouple to monitor the temperature as the reaction or the experiment proceeds. There's a few options for where we can put the thermocouple, but for temperature program work, we configure the instrument so that the thermocouple sits in the analysis tube just above the sample. This way, our measured temperatures will reflect the, the temperature that the sample is experiencing as the experiment continues, rather than the furnace temperature, which will always be slightly above that of the sample. So this is a sample tube installed on the instrument. This time we've got a sample of manganese dioxide sitting just on top of the, uh, the quartz wool in the bottom of the tube. And we can see the sample thermocouple within that side of the tube, the tip of which is sitting just above the manganese dioxide sample. So we're going to be monitoring the temperature experienced by that sample as our experiment is run. The next component to add in to this schematic is the detector. In the majority of cases, this will be a thermal conductivity detector or a TCD. Although for some analyses, we can replace this with something else, for example, a mass spectrometer or a gas chromatograph. The TCD, as the name suggests, measures the thermal conductivity of a gas mixture flowing during the analysis. It contains two sides, a reference side and an, an analysis side. And we'll see how these are connected into the gas streams in the next images. Essentially, both sides contain very thin inert wires, usually gold or platinum, and we measure the potential difference across them as the detector signal. The TCD also contains a heater, and that's shown here as the red block between the two channels. In fact, on the AutoChem, the various zones, for example, above the, the furnace, the detector, and we'll come on to see a, a cold trap zone as well, are all heated to main, maintain thermal stability throughout the analysis. And it's quite common to heat the TCD block to somewhere between 150 and 200 degrees. So if you are using TPR, the really delicate part of the system is the TCD. And we always have to bear in mind that we need to protect that and not pass materials we don't really want reaching it. We're now ready to introduce gas flow. Here at MTA Services for TPR, we use a blend of 10% hydrogen in nitrogen. The critical thing to consider when selecting gas mixtures is that they must have a reasonable difference in thermal conductivity. So between the active component, the hydrogen, and the inert carrier. The thermal conductivity of hydrogen is about seven times higher than that of nitrogen. So there's a really good difference there because we're going to be measuring what happens at the TCD when hydrogen is taken out of that flowing stream and consumed by the sample to reduce it. The gas stream is split into two and each side passes through its own mass flow controller. These enable us to select the gas flow rates passing further onto the instrument. And in the vast majority of cases, we will select these to be matched. The stream passing through the top mass flow controller here passes directly to the TCD reference channel and across the TCD filament and then out through exhaust. The gas passing through the bottom mass flow controller forms the analysis stream, and this passes through the sample tube. Before the analysis stream passes through to the TCD on the analysis side, we have one final component to add in. When undertaking TPR, the reduction product is almost certainly going to be water, and we don't want that passing to the TCD. This would interfere with the signal. We're just trying to monitor the change in hydrogen as it's consumed by the sample. In other cases, we also have to consider, as, as noted a, a couple of slides earlier, what else could be coming off of the sample, certainly with temperature program decomposition. We don't want to be passing anything corrosive through to the TCD that may damage the really delicate wires within it. In this case, we're passing the output stream through a cold trap before it reaches the TCD. In this case, the cold traps form from a slush bath 
And for the removal of water, we favour the use of liquid nitrogen to t and 2-propanol. This achieves a temperature close to minus 100 degrees C, and it will easily ask, last for the duration of a couple of analyses. So to give you an idea, this picture shows a propanol liquid nitrogen slush bath in a dewer that will be installed onto the instrument. To make it easier to see, we've taken some out here. It's a nice fine slush bath. There's no free liquid nitrogen in there. And that means that installing it over the cold trap should be reasonably easy. It's already stable, so the instrument will stabilize nice and quickly. And this is easily going to last for three to four hours. So the final setup on the instrument shows the slush bath or cold trap installed on the left hand side. And on the right hand side is the sample furnace, which we've now closed and the sample tube is located within that. We're now ready to start the analysis. Analysis is undertaken following a series of pre-programmed steps to form an experiment. A typical procedure for temperature program reduction, oxidation or decomposition follows the same common steps. The flow of carrier gas is started so that the analysis stream passes through the sample, through the cold trap and onto the TCD. The TCD is then enabled and the signal is allowed to stabilise to form a baseline. We then start recording the TCD signal and that will typically be one point every one to 10 seconds. That depends on the duration of the analysis and whether we want particularly fine detail from any part of it. We then start to heat the sample. So the furnace ramp rate is set and a good point to start at is around about 10 degrees C per minute. But again, that can be varied. The TCD signal is then recorded as the sample temperature is increased to a final set point. This could be as high as 1100 degrees on the autochem, but the actual end point will depend on the anticipated profile from the sample. There's not a lot of point in continuing once any reaction has been completed. For example, copper oxide reduces at quite a low temperature, so there's no point in continuing below, beyond uh, around about 300 to 350 degrees. Once the endpoint is reached, we stop recording the TCD signal. We bypass the sample tube and the cold trap so that the gas flow continues to the analysis side of the TCD without continuing to pass through the sample or the cold trap. And we will usually switch the stream to an inert gas such as nitrogen or helium. This protects the TCD and a hot TCD should always have a gas flow across both sides of it. We then cool the sample and the furnace to around about ambient temperature. So using the same instrument and setup, it's possible to undertake a range of analyses which relate to different chemical processes occurring with the sample. Essentially, we only need to change the carrier gas stream or constituents and decide whether or not to use a cold trap. This table gives a handy summary. For TPR, we use a blend of hydrogen in an inert balance gas. Whereas for TPO, we use oxygen with the same balance. And in both cases here at MCA, we use a mixture containing 10% of the active gas. For both TPR and TPO, we use a cold trap. This is essential for TPR as we need to remove water from the stream before it reaches the TCD, as this will interfere with results. And it's, it's more optional for TPO though. With temperature program decomposition, we only use an inert carrier gas, typically helium. And in most cases, we don't use, need to use a cold trap. However, if the decomposition product is corrosive, we should really consider using a cold trap or perhaps better still, replacing the TCD with an alternative detector, which won't be susceptible to damage. With temperature program desorption, our active gas is the molecule we want to investigate. A sample could be exposed to a flowing stream in situ, and this could be from a gas supply or from the built-in vapour generator. Again, an inert balance gas is used and a cold trap isn't usually required because we're aiming to detect the desorbing species at the detector. But again, care must be taken when 
deciding whether the desorption, desorbing species will interfere with the TCD or damage it in any way. So we've reached the end of this presentation. It covers the experimental setup for temperature programmed analyses, but we do have other presentations that show some results of TPR analyses and also the effect of analytical conditions on, on the results. And these can be quite profound. So feel free to go and take a look at them as well. Thank you for watching.